Love is not the namby pamby love. It's not the soft flowers and roses, and it's it's not the emotional and romantic love. It is the love that's responsible. It's a love that is a love in action. It's a love that will cost you. How can you say that you love God, whom you cannot see, if you don't love your brothers? So how do we say that we love God? We love God by loving one another that we can see. How can we say that we serve God? We serve God when we have served one another. He says, in the same way, you wash one another's feet, and this is how you express your love. Where you're ready to stoop down, and you're ready to go down low, and you're ready to take the filthiest part of a person, and you're ready to say that no matter how low I get, and no matter how much I have to do, no matter how much I have to love. And it's mo- the most unlovable parts. I will still serve that part because this is how love is expressed. Love is not the namby pamby. Love is not the soft flowers and roses, and it's it's not the emotional romantic love. It is the love that's responsible. It's a love that is a love in action. It's a love that will cost you. It's a love that will demand in times sacrifices. That you have to make sacrifices. That you have to be selfless. That you have to put yourself aside. You have to put your whims and fancies aside, so that you will serve the person to the point where it benefits that person and not you. That it brings a blessing to the person and not you. That it is that person first and not you first. That you put that person that you serve as the priority, as the object of your love and your devotion, as the object of your service. Jesus, when he came to the earth, he condescended, as the Bible says. He came down low and he took the essence of a servant. That in servanthood he served everyone who is a sinner, everyone who don't deserve to be loved, don't deserve to be served, who don't deserve anything that comes from God. And this is the love of God. And this is what it means when you want to express that. God loved you, and that you love one another, and that's how we do this. That we love God, we love one another, we serve each other. Jesus did not come to kill and to destroy. He did not come to condemn. He did not come to punish us. He came to redeem us. He came to wash us clean with His precious blood. He came to serve us with His love. That by the love of God He constrained us. He says, here the Scripture says that Jesus laid down His life. So I'm saying to you, church, that this is what it means to love one another in the body of Christ. We're not here to take somebody's life. We're not here to use someone's life. We've got to be watchful that we do not gain and we do not have this motive in our hearts that we want to. Take advantage of somebody, you know, and that's why the church has gone through so many difficulties to be accepted by the society that we live in today, by the generation today. That they frown at the church, they look at us, and they see hypocrisy. They see that the church doesn't really love as the way that they preach love. They see that the church. Has come into so much of abuses that we use people, that we touch the things that comes in to those lines of being covetous, loving of self. This is what Jesus came to this world to bring to an end, because he came into a very religious world. He came at a time when religion is something that is being used and abused. To oppress people, to put people under their feet, and dominate people's lives, and using religion to take from people, we have to be very careful because in this 21st century, we have to turn the clock around. We have to reverse what all the things that have gone wrong. We have to reverse it, and in this time of reset, this is the best time for us to do it. In this time, when before we get to come around and meet each other in person, we've got to turn this thing around and reset what is in our hearts that 
we have taken on or we have learned from a past generation or from somebody else. That we're not here to take somebody's life and use somebody. We're not going to use somebody for our own fame. We're not going to use somebody for our own gain. We're not going to use somebody to build ourselves up. That could never, that must never be our motive. Instead, we got to use ourselves so that we can build other people up. The people of this world will pick and choose what is the best for themselves. What is the easiest way? What is the easiest people, easiest people to work with? What is the easiest people so that I will gain? But what if we lose our life for others? Why do we do what we do? Why do we even do sometimes the things that we do for others? Is it really to serve somebody or is it to serve ourselves? Is it to make ourselves look good or is it so that we can bring good to other people? Because Jesus didn't choose the best men that are in that society. He didn't choose the high and mighty. He didn't choose the perfect people in his day. He chose the imperfect. He chose the common people. He chose the rough people. He chose the people that can be the most difficult people. He chose the people that didn't have the best education or did they have education at all? The singular ones they did. But it shows that God looks at us so differently than how we look at people. And so that's the reason why it is so important to learn the love of God, how He really loves us and how He loves others so that we can love one another in that same fashion.